good morning, folks. Today we've got more major weather stories and warnings. We're going to take a look at a good hint from the sun of the coming cycle minimum. Dr. Dunning gets to live out one of Elon Musk's daydreams, and we've finally got some intensified solar wind here at Earth. As always, we're going to begin over at spaceweathernews.com. Coming in at 193 angstroms to find the last day on the sun was quiet once more. Lone surface surge and pop did not produce eject a center disk. Minor movement. Solar flaring? What solar flaring? We've got the third blank sunspot day in a row here. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but first we've got a coronal hole stream impacting this morning. Density up, speed up, phi angle shifting around in blue, and the BZ up top tells us the energy is coming into the system in a big way. Eyes open for geomagnetic storms today. The next coronal hole is already visible on the northeast incoming, top left, dark, Northern fields returning to the Earth-facing disk. Let's come back to spaceweathernews.com for a moment and check out the solar cycle progression way down near the bottom of the page. Both radio flux and sunspot number are now showing what solar flaring and geomagnetism have for the last few years. Declining power and activity indicative of a weaker star. Expect lots of blank days in the coming years, but as we go down, the weather will continue to get weird and get more extreme. Speaking of weather, that's northeastern Australia, utterly lashed by that storm system over the weekend that really presented the strength of a tropical system on multiple occasions. Luckily, that system is beginning to move on now, still feeding the storms to the south and making their way to New Zealand while another system begins cresting in the west. Top story in Europe isn't that strong low in the Atlantic, it's the continued storms inland at France and Germany and the surrounding regions. Lightning injured 72 people yesterday. There's really little doubt about what is now coming to Florida. That system is going to deliver a major soaking, whether it does so as a tropical storm or not. Major precipitation across the east over the coming days while we continue to bake out west. Folks, yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast was posted to the premium content section of suspiciousobservers.org. Everything we do is supported through that portal, including these morning news and the other free resources available. We've got some shots of our star to close, followed by the weekly Mars Observers report from Dr. August Dunning. It's 3.55 a.m. in the New Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. It's time for the Mars Observer's weekly weather review and forecast for the planet Mars. Last week on Mars, the solar wind density was low at 2 to 2.5 particles per cubic centimeter that doubled to 4.5 to 5 particles per cubic centimeter on this 27th and 28th as a magnetic field line connection blew atmospheric gases off the planet off into space. The solar wind velocity was high at the start of the week, reaching 450 kilometers per second and rapidly increased to 500 kilometers per second as the solar field boundary passed and provided charge acceleration to the particles after the 27th and 28th. Solar wind temperatures peaked early in the week at 26,000 degrees Kelvin. Clouds were swept clear of the atmosphere over Sirtis Major at the first part of the reporting period and reformed during the calm part of the week only to be swept away again by the increase in solar wind velocity and density. Dust storm activity, typical of the perihelion position of Mars during the southern winter, continued along the south polar ice cap edge this past week. The canyon network of Val Marineris was moderately dusty on most afternoons. Northern portions of Cyrenum, Salus, Noches, Samaria also experienced some local scale dust lifting activities. A large dust storm propagated eastward over the plains of Arcadia during the beginning of the week, but subsided a few days later over Acidalia. In the extratropics and tropics, diffuse afternoon water ice clouds persisted over Alba, Tempe, Elysium, and the main shield volcanoes of the Tharsis region due to high ultraviolet irradiation 
lifting evaporated water vapor into the atmosphere to condense over the peaks of the ancient volcanoes in the region. However, the skies over the two rovers, Opportunity on Meridani Planum and Curiosity in Gale Crater, were storm-free throughout the week. Okay, Mars medium temperature at the equator will be around 40 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Uh, Mars is a great place. Problem is, boy, he's got to have a spacesuit on. Oh, and by the way, eat your heart out, Elon. See ya.